that money? Really good question. Can you hear me now? It's not. It's just not coming through the speakers. Yeah, the speakers are up. We're not used to this in person. Yeah, I'm really good at this type of stuff. Um, it's great to see some urgency from all of you today. I try to speak loudly and so we kind of figured out. Um, but just a couple of you know, housekeeping things before we begin worship. Once again, at the end of worship, our ushers will come in and dismiss you by pew as you kind of make your way outside. Hopefully you picked up your communion um, cups as you came in. If you didn't, just let us know. Um, but they're right out there. If you have all sorts of space, you can fill that as well. And during communion, I'll invite you to share the meal. And at that time, you can take your mask off. You'll be able to just you know, take your uh, communion at, at that point and then put the mask on when you finish your cup. So, Mark, do you want to say something? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You want someone to come grab you some water with you? I will just speak loudly. Um, it's best to just stand with all these mics I have in my mouth. I feel like we're supposed to put a bunch of IDs here. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't we get this thing started? The sound will come through at some point, I'm sure. Um, but we're going to begin with uh, a time of reflection. There we go. There it's working. We're going good. We got it. All right. We're going to begin just a time with reflection. So it's going to get quiet again from me. Uh, but Connie's going to play a piece, Holy, 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 which you will recognize as she plays that. Um, but I invite you to use that time to prepare yourselves for worship, to prepare your, your hearts and your minds this day. I'd like to invite you to join in our call to worship, which you'll find printed in your bulletin or you can read on your phone or tablet. Please join with me. Blessed is every creature and creation, unique and particular, each a testimony to God. Through our diversity and differences, divinity is encountered. The glory of God is revealed in our midst. Extravagant and expansive is the image of God. 
Holy is the collage of life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Uh, please join in our gathering hymn. Uh, we'll sing verses 1 and 2 today. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God of multiplicity, you move fluidly among us without concern for boxes or binaries. Wild and free, you reveal yourself in abundance of forms. May your spirit come and help us to perceive. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim the life of mercy, compassion, and justice that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory Jesus shares with us. Glory and praise to you, O Creator. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coil, coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go with for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll do a Psalm 29, spoken responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. 
The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Romans. Siblings, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and of children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man named Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee and a Jewish leader. One night, he went to Jesus and said, Sir, we know that God has sent you to teach us. You cannot work these miracles unless God were with you. Jesus replied, I tell you for certain that you must be born from above before you can see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, How can a grown man ever be born a second time? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that before you can get into God's kingdom, you must be born not only by water, but by spirit. Humans give life to their children, yet only God's spirit can change you into a child of God. Don't be surprised when I say that you must be born from above. Only God's spirit gives new life. The spirit is like the wind that blows wherever it wants to. You can hear the wind, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, How can you be a teacher of Israel and not know these things? I tell you for certain that we know what we are talking about because we have seen it ourselves, but none of you will accept what we say. If you don't believe when I talk to you about things on earth, how can you possibly believe if I talk to you about things in heaven? No one has gone up to heaven except for the Son of Man who came down from there. And the Son of Man must be lifted up, just as a metal snake was lifted up by Moses in the desert. Then everyone who has faith in the Son of Man will enter into eternal life. For God loved the people of this world so much that God gave their only Son, so that everyone who has faith in Him will have eternal life and never really die. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn its people. God sent Him to save them. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy to all of you this day. No images, photographs, paintings, drawings, they all can be extremely powerful. I mean, have you ever been moved uh, by an image that you saw, a photograph or a painting that, that kind of created in you this deep feeling of emotion? Or perhaps it, it caused you to cry. Maybe it was an image that filled you with joy. Or even maybe it was an image that completely repulsed you. Right? Because just as much as they can draw us in, images can, can push us away. But either way, often what happens when you see an image is that you see more than just a picture. You see a story. A story in some kind of way that, that, that creates this powerful response in you, either positive or negative. Well, images, they're what we get in our readings today. Images concerning God, which is, which is fitting because today is Trinity Sunday, a day in which we remember and we celebrate the multiplicity of ways that God engages the world, you know, a spirit, a beloved child, and in our first reading, a king on a throne. In our reading from Isaiah, God is revealed as this lofty figure 
and too holy even for the angels to, to lay their eyes on as they sing songs of praise and, and adoration. And for Isaiah, we hear that this encounter with God, well, it's enough to move him to a voluntary action on behalf of God. We hear him say, here I am, send me, in response to God's voice asking, whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? In this reading, the vastness, the, the holiness, the grandness of God, it, it compels Isaiah into this vocation of, of prophetic action and witness. However, before Isaiah got to this new calling, Isaiah had a very powerful reaction right, to this image of divine holiness, a God lofty, vast, and royal, a God too otherworldly for an ordinary human to lay their eyes on, lest they risk death. And what we hear is Isaiah's response to seeing this, this vision of God is that he is not worthy to be there. He's not worthy of, of God's presence, right? He says, I am someone of unclean lips. The people I live among, we are all people of unclean lips. That means that they are a people who have not worshipped and praised God faithfully with fidelity. So Isaiah's powerful response is first to recall his sinfulness, his not being worthy for God to address, for God to even be present with. But here's the catch. Isaiah, he forgets, or likely, I think he disregards his own belovedness. I mean, God would not have shown up. God would not have appeared to Isaiah if God did not feel Isaiah was worthy already. But I'm curious, you know, what would you have done if you were in Isaiah's sandals? Because they didn't have shoes, he had sandals. You know, if you were standing, you know, before the presence of, of God, this angelic host flying around you, what might your response be? And what emotions would, would rise up in you? What questions would, would come to your mind? What words would you speak to the Holy One? Now, if I'm being honest, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is fear. A fear that feels a lot like panic. Right? I'd want to believe that this vision would be like this most transformative moment in my life, but I think I might be afraid. Afraid of what might lie on the other side of this opportunity to be God's witness? What kind of responsibility would God be entrusting me with? But I wonder maybe, well, that's because I'm not Isaiah. I'm not living in Isaiah's time. Maybe this vision of a lofty king isn't the one for me. You know, I wonder, though, you know, what vision would what vision, what image, what metaphor for God would compel me to a prophetic action? You know, if I set aside some time to, to settle into my imagination, if I set time to, to sit around with the, the Spirit, what vision of God would empower me, would compel me to say, here I am, send me? What vision of God would compel you? You know, what image of God would, would it offer you the, the empowerment to say the same thing as Isaiah? I mean, I think these are really important and they are powerful questions to ask of ourselves because ultimately that image, that vision of God will inform you. It will guide you. It will lead you to take certain actions and to live in a certain way in the world. And so knowing what that image is that motivates you, is important. And I want you to think about that for a second. And if you're joining us on Facebook, you can put those answers in the comments. What are the images? What are the, the visions, the metaphors of God that, that move you, that compel you to take some sort of prophetic action in your life? And I know that, that envisioning that can be daunting. Thinking about what image would move me to action is daunting because, well, it it might lead somewhere. It might create transformation in myself. It might result in some sort of action that I have to take. 
right? And so we're left with these questions. Well, then what is God asking? Who will I become if I say yes? What will it cost me? And I think that, that that's Nicodemus' struggle. Maybe that's why he's so confused in this gospel reading, because it actually terrifies him, this new image of God and what it means. The changes in belief and understanding that God, that, of God that Jesus presents to him. The new values and mission and the way of life that Jesus calls him to. It may require Nicodemus to give up so much. To give up the entire way that he has structured and organized his beliefs, his, his visions, his metaphors for God. But here's the grace in all of this. These visions of God, they're not meant to drive us into fear. They're not meant to cause us to question our worthiness, visions of God and from God. They're meant to be signs of our belovedness. You see, with belovedness as our starting point, well, fear becomes just another emotion that we move through on our way to courage, courage to gain our own glimpse of God and to be moved into that prophetic action, to that faithful action. Because in our belovedness, we're never judged for what we do or don't produce or accomplish. In our belovedness, we can find the courage and the conviction to choose a way of, of liberation and flourishing for ourselves and for this world. And God will bring transformation to us and into the world through us, as costly as that might be. As the gospel says, God's wind will blow. It'll blow those winds of transformation in and through our lives. The Spirit will enable us to bear God's own prophetic witness in Jesus of love and grace and compassion and, and equity and justice to comp compel us to bear that to this world with a new and renewed and clear vision of who God is, a vision that God shares and shows to us in and through Jesus, a vision of God's love. That image, that vision, that's what will empower us to enact this life, this prophetic life, and working for justice and peace throughout the world. We can do that because we are grounded, grounded in and have that vision, the certainty of God's love. And hopefully, like Isaiah, when we gain our glimpse of God, we too, we will desire to say, here I am, send me a vision of faithfulness indeed. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'd like to invite you to, to join in on our hymn of the day. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of Come Join the Dance of the Trinity. And if you want to dance in your seats, <laughs> feel free.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray, O God, for Mount Cross and communities of faith around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your Spirit and empowered to carry out the ministry of healing and reconciliation you have called us to, Lord, in your mercy. Your Hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder, all of which reveal the preciousness of creation. Guide us, O Lord, to tend to all of creation with care and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace and prosperity where violence occurs, may peace be restored. Where oppression is rampant, may justice be served. Where corruption is found, may equity be renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living it with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Bring comfort to those suffering physical or emotional pain. We pray especially for Diane, Jan, Eileen, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll continue worship with the celebration of Holy Communion. I invite you to pull out your communion cups and bread. And please join in our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, for the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying that this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be by thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to celebrate the meal, God's holy food for God's holy people. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The love of God does not inform, enforce sameness. It does not demand conformity. It loved, its love does not shame differences or demean deviations. Love celebrates the multitudes of ways to be, of ways to love, of ways to practice liberation on this shared journey toward the kingdom of God. The blessing of God be with you. God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please join our dismissal hymn, which we will sing verses 1 and 2 of. Lord of all without me. 
peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.